The other day, I posted this video of a hummingbird over on Instagram showing off the power of the tracker and stabilization inside DaVinci Resolve. And it didn't take long after I posted it for a bunch of people to reach out and ask me to do a tutorial. This type of stabilization is a little bit different than what you might use if you just had a little bit of a shaky camera shot. It's definitely a bit more of an extreme effect where you want to keep your subject in one place in the frame at all times. It's probably most well known at this point from the commercials where they would lock onto an earbud in someone's ear while they were jumping or running, but I also use the exact same effect for a different part of this video that I'll show you as well. So secure the cup, let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how I did it. All right, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve. We can see the finished product over here on the left-hand side. This bottom part is just the music that I imported from Instagram Reels so that I would have something to edit to. On the top here, we've got the power of stabilization in DaVinci Resolve and stabilized. So you know when the stabilization kicks in. So those are just titles. They're not really important right now. And then below here, we've got just duplicated clips and I'll show you why we do that in a little bit. Now, if we scroll over here, we can see the original Original clip quite a bit zoomed out here and if I play it you'll notice it's not actually like camera shake it's just that tree swaying back and forth that was causing the shakiness of the clip that we're gonna stabilize out so the first thing that we're gonna do is hop into fusion with this clip you can either click on this as long as you're selected and your playhead is on it you can just click straight on the fusion button or you can right click on the clip and go open in fusion page now it might look a little bit different that's because fusion happens before the color grading in the process that clip that I had in the edit page is color graded but because you can see here's the edit here's fusion and then here's the color grade so where we're looking at it in the process it's still not color graded yet but that's not going to affect us at all now what we're seeing at the bottom here is basically our media in one which is the clip itself then our media out and that's basically saying this is what's going back to the timeline we're going to hit shift space and then i'm going to search for tracker and with media one selected, if I hit add, it should add the tracker in our chain. Then this little thing popped up on our screen here. You can see it's a little green box and we're just gonna take that and place it over top of our bird. On the right hand side here, if you're not seeing this menu, you can click inspector in the top right. We can see what's inside that box. So all I wanna do is kind of widen this box a little bit. If you wanna move it, it's this little tiny square in the top left corner of the box. And then there's this surrounding box as well, this kind of like dotted, line and what that's telling it is that we want to search for this area within the outer area so it's looking for the bird inside anywhere of here so if the bird happens to move which we know it will then it's going to search within that outer bounds for the bird now because I found my tracking point in the middle of the clip here see how the red line is in the middle it's not over at the start I'm actually gonna track backwards to start with this does take some time but I'll speed it up a little bit so you don't have to wait through the whole thing. Then we're gonna go back to where we started here and we're gonna track forward. The other thing you can do if you wanna speed this up a little bit is you can try and make your box smaller. If it's got less size to search, it takes less time. So we're done there. We've got our whole thing tracked. And if we play this back through, we can watch that little green box and it follows the bird perfectly. Now, just a quick disclaimer, it's not always as perfect of a track as this one was, but if you've got a relatively simple shot with good contrast like this one, you can see the bird against the simple background like that is good contrast contrast, then Fusion does an absolutely fantastic job at nailing it on the first try. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do here is we want to go over into our inspector and we're going to choose operation. We're going to change the operation to match move. And then all we're going to do is we're going to click background only. And then when we play it back, you'll notice that the frame is moving around a whole bunch, leaving the bird steady in the center. And the issue with this right now is that you can see it's losing space on the side. We're actually getting blank parts of the frame because it's keeping our subject in the same spot. So what we're gonna have to do is basically just zoom in or crop in enough so that we never hit that edge piece, which in this case is totally fine because I wanted to zoom in a bunch anyway to get a little bit closer on the hummingbird, but it's something to keep in mind if you're planning to do this effect to shoot a little wider than you think you need so you've got that extra 
extra space. Now, there are two ways that we can accomplish this. A lot of people will go shift spacebar and then they will search for transform. They'll add a transform into the chain after the tracker and then we can just bump up the size here. I'm actually gonna do it slightly differently. I'm just gonna go back into my edit page. I'm gonna open my inspector here and with that clip selected, I'm actually going to zoom it in here. I'm gonna go two times and then I'm just gonna get my hummingbird nice and centered here. There we go. And now once this blue bar is fully loaded, you can see we now have the whole clip where the hummingbird is pretty darn centered. So now we've got the final stabilized version, but in the reel that I put out, the first half of it wasn't stabilized and we had this little title on here. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab this, holding option, I'm gonna drag up and that's gonna duplicate it. And then what I wanna do is actually trim this to the halfway point and we're gonna open this one in the Fusion page. Now, because we already have the tracker on there, we're good to go on that. So the tracking information is exactly the same, but we're gonna go back into option operation and we're going to change this to foreground over background. Now what we're going to do is go back to the very start of the clip. I'm going to make sure I'm not selected on any of these and I'm going to choose a text tool. Highlighting that text tool and going over to our inspector, I'm going to type watch the hummingbird. And if I select the text again and hit one, we'll be able to see a preview of it here. So I can choose a text to use, change the color. And then what I wanna do is take the output of it and put it into the green arrow. That's gonna be our foreground. Now I can move it to where I want it in the frame. I'm gonna change the size a little bit. Remembering that this is gonna get a lot bigger when it's zoomed in on the edit page. And then I also want to create an arrow. So all I'm gonna do is click off of that text again. I'm gonna choose a background. I'm gonna hit one so that I can see what I'm looking at over here. And then with the background selected, I'm gonna choose a polygon. I'm sure there are easier ways to make an arrow, but that's the way I know how. And then all I'm gonna do is drag from the output of the background to the output of the text, and it'll automatically merge them together. Now, I just need to go back to my polygon, bring the size down quite a bit, change that border width, because now it's a little too much. Just gonna move things around a little bit here. There we go. And now clicking back on that tracker, remember before I changed this from background only so that the tracker was only moving what was in the background input, which is our clip of our hummingbird going into the yellow arrow here. But now we've got our text and our arrow going into the foreground. So if we change this to foreground over background, now what happens is that the text and the arrow are going to move according to the tracking that we got from the bird. So it should move right alongside. Let's go back into the edit page here. And then again, because we did our zoom and our position in the edit page, you can see that it's way zoomed in. When we play it back, the text and the arrow are locked on with the bird. And then the only other thing that I really did in this clip is that where the stabilization kicks in, I just matched this first clip along with where the stabilization happens. So if I bring my opacity of that top layer down to like 50%, and I can just kind of line these up and then turn my opacity all the way back up. And now we've got this. And the stabilization kicks in at that halfway point. And that's the reel. All right, I hope that was super helpful and that this effect is something that you might be able to use in some of your own projects to add some interest into those shots. If you have any questions or you need clarity, don't hesitate to ask down in the comments. And while you're down there, let me know, is this actually something that you would use in one of your projects? And on your way down, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.